What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video. In this one, we're gonna go over and showcase some early season three reloaded gameplay. We're gonna talk about the brand new weapons. Other than the BAL 27, there's a couple of others. And then we're gonna talk about some other things that you definitely need to know about. If you find the video helpful or informative, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Also be sure to check out yesterday's video. I showed early gameplay footage of the upcoming rewards for the brand new virus mainframe event, the new animated camo, the brand new virus mainframe operator bundle, what it looks like, how much it's gonna cost, and even the brand new playlist, the arcade mode, and all that good stuff. That's going to be the last event that will take place before we jump into Season 3 Reloaded, and that goes live this upcoming Wednesday. So if you want all the early details on that, I'll have it linked down in the description. Before we get into it, a quick word from our sponsor, MessyModdingStore.com. It's a store that can get you the most exclusive operators, help you complete your Mastery Camo challenges, and much more. And the reason why I promote them is they do everything 100% legit without using mods or unlock tools. And not to mention, they have some of the best reviews, so check them out. The link will be down in the description. We talked about this yesterday, but triple double XP is now live. This is going to be bringing in double XP, double weapon XP, and double battle pass XP. This will be going up until Monday the 22nd, ending at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The craziest part is at the same exact time that we have this double XP event, X Defiance Beta has officially dropped and they are doing a test session and that's going to be going live pretty much at the same time, except it will be ending one day earlier on the 21st. This is available on PC. Xbox S, X, and on PlayStation 5. And if you guys want to play now, I'll have the link for it down in the description. Or you could just go into your PlayStation Xbox store, download the game, and then give it a try. According to many people, this game is the quote-unquote Call of Duty killer. So if you want to give it a try, see what this game is all about. It is available right now for a limited time, completely for free. Just wanted to let you guys know about that. If you guys are fans of this game and you actually enjoy it, let me know if you guys want to see videos on that. But anyways, Season 3 Reloaded update is set to arrive on May 1st, which isn't this Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that, and that's going to be around 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I did make a full roadmap video where we talked about exactly what new features, what new content, and everything to expect from it. So if you've missed that video, I'll have a link down in the description. But one thing is, there is a new feature called infill strikes that are going to be coming in. Leakers were able to get early gameplay footage of what that looks like, so we got a little bit of early season three reloaded gameplay. What infill strikes do is one of three locations at the start of a rebirth match will potentially end up getting destroyed. The very first one could be Water Tower, and this is the early gameplay footage of it that we have while you are landing, well actually before while you're in the plane. You'll see the airplanes do an animation and they'll crash in or send some sort of a missile to destroy the Water Tower. It'll start smoking, and then by the time you get closer to it, you'll notice that the Water Tower has completely fallen. This is the photo that they provided as well as the gameplay footage that we got of it. It basically just drops the Water Tower. It gives you an area where you can actually play and hide in. This one doesn't really do that big of a map update or change. I don't think it really impacts the lobby all too much unless you're one of those players who likes to camp up top at the water tower and you just won't be able to do that for the duration of this match but then the second location this one is going to be the lighthouse that will also get destroyed and the lighthouse will completely fall and what it does is it'll fall towards the prison and once it does that will give you an automatic rotation to the top of prison from headquarters without having to go through the stairs where people are camping or through ladders where there's probably proximity mindset and then the last infield strike potential change is going to be the inside of prison prison which has not yet been revealed in game as of right now but we do got footage of it and that's going to be bringing in the very center of it this will just get completely destroyed it'll turn the whole middle section into rubble it'll give you a straight rotation up to the top as well you can use a vehicle you can run up there if you want but that also gives you a direct route to the very top of prison and remember these don't happen all too often and if they do they'll happen at the start of a match so if you're not happy with it and you see it going on you can always back out of the lobby and this is something that they're going to experiment with i'm guessing depending on the feedback that they get they may end up removing this feature that's probably why some players started reporting seeing it maybe they're just spreading it out just a little bit just to test out the waters see if people are fans of it if people hate it i played around three or four hours yesterday and i only saw it one time so it doesn't happen nearly as often i'm guessing when the reloaded update drops it's going to start happening more some other brand new features that you can also expect to be coming in for example is the new weapon trade station this is just recycled content from the og warzone one based on the description in the blog post it's going to work the same exact way you end up trading in a weapon and it will give you two rarities lower and then in return it could give you some other special items such as ammunition lethals tacticals and even a possible specialist perk token and we saw how that worked out in warzone one this is just the footage that you guys are seeing here of that don't really expect much of a difference even the weapon trade station itself looks very similar to the original one another new feature is the foresight kill streak that is something else that we saw in og warzone one and that one it pretty much tells you where all the future gas circles are gonna be and it's going to look exactly
exactly the same as this footage. You find the kill streak in one of the crates. You can buy it at a buy station. Once you get it, you'll be able to call it in and then it'll just show you the future circles will work and look exactly the same. Some other footage that we have is going to be of the new checkpoint 6v6 map. As sad as it is, this is basically just a recycled portion of Stronghold from Rebirth Island. It looks from the photos, it's going to be the same exact thing. No changes. They're probably just going to fix it up to that way there's going to be spawns on both sides and then change up the barriers a little bit. But as you can see here from the way that it looks on the map icon, not much has really changed with it. If you do land at Stronghold consistently or you are familiar with this, then you've technically basically played this checkpoint map a little bit earlier, but that will be available with the Season 3 Reloaded update. And here's just quick gameplay showcasing of what the map will look like. Everything is just going to stay exactly the same. And this is the gameplay footage that I pretty much got while I was landing there fighting other teams. The next thing I want to talk about are the upcoming brand new DLC weapons we're getting in Season 3 Reloaded and the first look at some of them and what they are going to look like. So first off, first one is going to be the BAL-27. This one is pretty obvious. I mean, we talked about this in the past. We've seen this in the blog post. This is the photo that Call of Duty ended up giving us. It's confirmed that it's going to be available in the classified battle pass sector, which will end up being revealed on the day of the season three reloaded update. Everyone will have access to this classified sector. You don't need to own the battle pass. There will be a total of five different challenges you'll need to complete. Every single challenge will get you a different cosmetic. Sometimes it's double XP tokens calling cards, things like that. And the final reward is going to unlock you the battle 27. What you can do to save yourself some time and not have to do all these challenges is if you know someone who already did, they could just drop you the weapon and zombies. You could pick it up and you'll automatically get it. The other thing is, is there's going to be a total of four additional weapons, and those are going to be under the category of aftermarket parts, but some of them are actually going to be brand new weapons. This first one that we have is going to be for the BP-50 called the Jack Revenger Kit. This one's actually going to be launching with the next weekly challenge that we have for week four, but we ended up getting early gameplay. Apparently, it's available in mystery boxes in zombies. This is what the actual weapon for the BP-50 will look like. You can see it looks a lot smaller. It's not as heavier and as bulkier as the regular BP-50 is basically turns it into an SMG and along with that it looks like the movement is sped up a little bit the fire rate is a lot faster it plays a little bit more like a SMG than it does with the standard BP 50 AR and we already know how overpowered the weapon already is with this aftermarket part it might actually become one of the number one meta weapons that we're going to be able to use credit to a single peach for getting this early footage but this is what it looks like and this is the early gameplay and it should be available with this Wednesday's weekly challenge but one of the more interesting ones is they're actually bringing back the the Akimbo model 1887s into Modern Warfare 3 and that's actually under an aftermarket part called the Wardens. This will be an aftermarket part that turns the Lockwood MK2 into a dual wield lever action shotgun and this is the photo that they provided in the blog post. Pretty much very similar to the models that we've seen in past Call of Duty titles. It definitely looks like something that will make it a very viable weapon for you to use and it feels like it just it makes it look like it's a completely different weapon and that's what I'm starting to like with aftermarket parts is they're actually starting to completely change them and make them into actual DLC weapons. I also believe very similar to Modern Warfare 2, the animation will change every time you shoot, it'll flip backwards as you see here from this older footage. And it just will make the Lockwood feel like a completely brand new weapon. This is something they said in the past where they're gonna try to bring in Modern Warfare 2 OG weapons and MW3 OG weapons into this new Call of Duty title. And they're doing it right now with aftermarket parts. We did get the Car 98K leaked as well as the Spaz 12. And it looks like this is just the start of many fan favorite weapons making their way back into COD. Also another aftermarket part, this one is called the Jack Patriot. This will come in for the M16. It says it converts the M16 into a fully automatic rifle with a heavy ported barrel built to provide superior recoil control and firing aiming stability. We did get a stealth update for the M16 around a week ago. This did buff the recoil for the M16 a lot, although it still felt like a really weak weapon because you have to hit all your burst shots for it to actually be efficient. So with this aftermarket part coming in, making it a automatic rifle, this might actually make the M16 one of the better weapons and it might be a part of the meta. So this is another aftermarket part that's gonna be coming in with the mid-season update. And then the last one that we know of, this one is called the Jack Atlas kit. This comes in for the AMR9. SMG. It will convert the AMR9 into an extremely lethal and accurate five round burst carbine chambered in 556. So it basically will turn it into like a burst AR type of style. The total being eight aftermarket parts, one of them already being available for the more sniper rifle and the other seven coming out. That means there's one weekly challenge that's going to have a reward that's not an aftermarket part. We're not entirely sure what that is at the moment. So we do have a little bit more information on that. I got you guys. But as of right now, this is everything you need to know about the DLC 
aftermarket parts and everything to expect with the season three reloaded update. Last but not least, there were the season three reloaded operator skins that were shown early via the season three cinematic trailer. I did make a full dedicated video discussing and talking about the different operators that we saw, but this cinematic trailer showcased many different operator skins that are not currently available in the season three update, meaning that they're gonna be added in the season three reloaded version. I guess this was the first early look gameplay that we had for season three reloaded and we didn't even know it at the time because this dropped the same time that the update went live and at the time we thought oh maybe these operators are just in the files but they're currently not in the files at all and they're gonna more than likely be added with reloaded and they showcase like the bat mascots the little spooky bunnies they also showcase the task force 141 winter operators if you want the full detail and rundown on it i'll have the link to the video down in the description anyways that's all that i got for you guys in this video thank you guys for tuning in and hopefully i'll be seeing you guys back on the channel again peace